You're looking at a 24 to 25 teraflop system. This is gonna be two and a half times faster than PS5. It's also going to be about 20% faster than the PS5 Pro, and it's going to be 200% more powerful than Xbox Series X. This is insanity. They're kind of just jumping ahead of Sony again, it seems like they're following the same suit every single time. What's going on guys? I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, tap the bell so you guys know when I go live or post a new video. And be sure to check me over on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash real Joseph Corey. You can also check out all my other social media accounts, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, all at real Joseph Corey. You guys can also check out my new music that I've dropped on Spotify. Toto Bizarro, Mesquito, No Migo, Jack Harlow, Combo, Gonzo, Salvo, Fuero, Not So Like a Fucking Soprano. Joseph Corey, all the links in the information box below. So let's get right into the video at hand today, guys. It's very exciting, and if you've checked out the channel before, you know I just dropped a video on the PS5 Pro that is going to be coming out, and it's going to be announced somewhere in late summer of 2023, and it's going to be coming out in the fall of 2023. But what about Xbox? What about Microsoft, who just basically acquired Activision? What are their plans going forward? Well, the rumors that I've heard are pretty significant and also could suggest 24 teraflops, which is about two teraflops more than the PS5 Pro. The PS5 Pro, I'm not gonna get into the specs or release date per se right here in this video, but let's just say it's on par with a 3080 just about and not to mention has a ryzen 5700 x cpu could potentially even get a 5800 x cpu considering the prices are going down as the new ryzen 7 series is coming out in a few short months however that doesn't seem to be deterring microsoft any because it looks like from what i've heard from sources that the xbox Series X Elite, which is what it seems like it might be called at this point. There's no real definitive answer for that. However, that looks like it could very well be the case, is going to be getting a Ryzen 7700X CPU, which is an eight core CPU, five NM, which is crazy. It's gonna be even better than the Ryzen 5700X that is gonna be in the PS5 Pro. But as you can see here, the technology going forward is getting better and less NMs or nanometers. They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The TDP seems to be going up at times. The Ryzen 7700X is eight core 16 threads, just like the 5700. However, this CPU does a 4,500 megahertz base clock with a turbo boost of 5,400 megahertz, which is up from the previous generation. The Ryzen 5700X is a 3,400 megahertz or 3.4 gigahertz with a turbo clock speed of 4.6 gigahertz or 4,600 megahertz which is nowhere near the 4.5 gigahertz base clock of the 7700X and the turbo boost clock of 5400 megahertz or 5.4 gigahertz. The AM4 architecture of the 5700X has a TDP of 65 watts and it has seven and then the cache on the 5700X is also 32 megabytes. The AM5 architecture of the 7700X has 40 megabytes of cache versus 32, but it has a TDP of 105 watts. So it's using a lot more power than the 5700X, which is a little bit odd if you ask me how you're gonna be able to increase that much TDP on a 5nm chip but if that is the case that means it's going to be using more power but the temperature will relatively stay the same their temperature of the two CPUs is going to relatively be the same even though it's using double the wattage and that's because of the NM architecture seven nanometers versus five it's really hard to explain all the details of that but it's going to be a very efficient chip essentially because the temperature is not going to get drastically higher which means a console like the Xbox Series X Elite will be able to cool off this chip because the Xbox Series X in its own right has a massive large fan and everything is funneled through the console. Everything around the bottom of the console, air completely passes through and heat rises. The cooling in the Xbox Series X is significantly better than any console ever made. Very good cooling system. 
And the Series X is gonna have even better cooling. So the mere fact that this processor is gonna be significantly faster and it's relatively gonna be the same temperature is gonna be no task at all for the Series X. The big thing here to note is it seems like Microsoft is jumping into a better architecture than the PS5 Pro, but it's not really for sure. There's no for sure thing here. Microsoft is working towards PCI Express 5.0 or some equivalent for the Series X, meaning that the bus bandwidth and everything else and just the overall speed of the system is going to be a little bit more advanced than PS5 Pro. Does this mean anything right now? Not really, but if they go through with everything here, it could mean a little bit more future proof for the consoles. And I feel like because they're coming out relatively close to the original consoles, it's gonna be a lot better for us because with PCI Express 5 and a 7700X processor and a really good video card, the Xbox Series X Elite could last three to five years easily, but it's hard to say for sure. Now, looking at the new GPUs coming from AMD, the new Radeon uh, running the new Navi 33 chipset, it's looking like PS5 Pro is gonna get the 7700 XT, which is on par basically with a 3070 Ti or maybe a 3080 uh, or a 6800 XT Radeon, which is basically right where it goes. 128 bus bandwidth, 256 bit, right around 20 teraflops, but it's gonna have a slightly different variant with 12 gigabytes of video. It's a great video card for the PS5 Pro. However, Microsoft seems to be a little bit more antsy on performance here. Now we all know that consoles get a variant of the PC full-size video card. It's not quite the same, it's just based on that infrastructure or will kind of be like almost identical, but the size is different. A few things here or there may change. And I guess the only way to really look at that is the difference between a desktop processor and a laptop processor. You can have uh, two of them have identical parts like the 3080 and the 3080M, one is a mobile processor. And, and both Radeon and Nvidia have different video cards for desktop or laptop based on the same architecture, similar speeds, but not quite the same. It's the same thing as console. Without diving too far into it or boring everybody to death, keeping it real simple as it's pretty much gonna be a 7800 XT. The 7800 XT is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's gonna be a five plus six NM versus the seven NM of the 6800 XT. It's also gen five PCI Express, which is gonna go hand in hand with their 7700 X CPU. The infinity cache is gonna be 64 megabytes. We're looking at 18 gigabits a second. That's the equivalent of just under six gigabytes per second. That is crazy speed for a console. Now the memory bus, unlike the PS5 Pro being at 128 bit, this is 256 bit. So if everything is true with the rumors, the Series X Elite is gonna be insane. Video RAM is gonna be up from the 12 gigabyte. Now, like the PlayStation 5 Pro gonna have 12 gigabytes of video. There's two variants of the 7800 XT, which is going to be 16 gigs or 20 gigs. I highly doubt there's gonna be 20 gigabytes of video in a console. Could be wrong, but I highly doubt it. We're probably looking at the 16 gigabyte variant, which is insane still. 16 gigabytes in a console. There's very, good chance that we may only end up with 12 anyway, because it'll be a variant of the 7800 XT. This is crazy to think about. This could be possible here. 6800 XT is RDNA 2, 7800 XT is RDNA 3. Unlike the 6800's GPU package of monolithic, it's gonna be MCM. We're not gonna get into all these details, but I can just tell you that it is going to be crazy. Absolutely crazy. Now, like my email says, this is the rumored setup for the Xbox Elite. If this is indeed what they do, you're looking at a 24 to 25 teraflop system. And the PS5 Pro's 20 to 21 teraflop is already double what the PS5 is. And the Xbox Series X is only around 12 and a half teraflops, meaning the PS5 Pro is almost twice as powerful as the Xbox Series X. If this is the case, this is gonna be two and a half times faster than PS5. It's also going to be about 20% faster than the PS5 Pro, and it's going to be 200% more powerful than Xbox Series X. This is insanity, if it is the truth. I don't know for sure, but the email comes from a reliable source, and if it's anywhere in the neighborhood of this, it is gonna be crazy. So what do you guys think? You guys think the Series X Elite is gonna try to one-up the PS5 Pro like the Series X did to the PS5? If you really look at it, it's kind of the same thing. 25 versus 21, 12 and a half versus 10 and a half. 
they're kind of just jumping ahead of Sony again, it seems like. It seems to be that they're following the same suit every single time, although Sony seems to be outselling Microsoft every turn. So I really don't know how this is going to play out. Nobody really does. What we do know for sure is they seem to be following the same trend for release dates. So expect to hear something next summer between June and September about a release date at the same time as Sony. Both consoles are going to be launching about the same time, and it looks like we're getting summer 23 announcements and release dates in November of 2023. And I'm willing to bet 95% at least that that's what's gonna happen. There's no way these consoles get pushed to 2024. I just don't see that happening. It's possible, but very unlikely from what I've read and a lot of other people have read, we're looking at like probably an August announcement and a November release date in 2023. So let's see what happens. The console wars continue with this architecture in the Series X Elites safe to say Xbox is going to be ahead of the pack yet again in hardware. But does that mean anything for sales? Not necessarily because Sony still outsells them like crazy. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm a gamer fanatic. I have every console you can think of behind me. Literally 32X and Sega CD is the only two consoles I don't have. I have Coleco, Atari 5600, Atari 3600, Intellivision, uh, all the GameCubes, like 10 of them, PS1, PS2, PS2 Slims. Every single serial number from start to finish, nine different models of PS1, all the PS3s, PS4s. I got all the Xboxes. They're all sitting behind me. And I've got a stack of games on this side, probably close to 3,000 games across the different consoles. I love gaming. I, I PC game right now, and I play every game I can get my hands on. I love playing games. I'm a diehard gamer, and I love to see the console war continue like it's been for the past 30 plus years. I would just like to see Nintendo get in on this. I really would. I'd like to see some elite version of the Switch so they can get right in on this action and blow us away. But I don't know. What do you guys think? But that's gonna do guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to smash that subscribe button, tap the bell, and make sure you guys are notified when I go live or post new videos as I'm gonna be doing some live streams here a few days a week. I'm gonna be doing Facebook and YouTube bringing some live streams back to YouTube. Be sure to check me out over on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Real Joseph Corey. Check out all the socials, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter at Real Joseph Corey. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Be sure to check out my YouTube shorts as well as all my videos I post over on Facebook and make sure you guys are liking, commenting, and chatting with me here, right here on the YT Team Red. We'll catch you guys. Thanks for stopping in. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless. We'll see you soon. Peace. Yeah, no,